it has been estimated that there are hundreds of cults around the world today. These guys or women are rising up from different places, claiming to be something more than they actually are. And they are gathering people after them, teaching, teaching them things that are totally uh, biased, wrong, unbiblical. Even more, some of these guys are leading people to commit suicide and a lot of individuals have lost their lives as a result of these occultic movements. But now, how do we identify a cult? What are some points? What are some features? What are some cues that we need to know in order to make sense and identify a cult whenever we confront them? Friends, these are some of the questions we are going to answer today as I present to you five identifying features of cults. Please stay tuned. Welcome back friends, my name is James. Welcome to Look and Live, where we've come to look at the Lamb of God in order that we might live the life of God. Friends, before we go into our video today, click the bell icon to be notified for our upcoming video and also subscribe to the channel and share this information with somebody else as well. Now friends, without further ado, let's get into the Word of God to identify, to get to know the features of a cult. Number one. Cults usually have a single leader who becomes the cult's messiah. Whenever you confront a cult, it's oftentimes based on a single man. Now, let's look at what the Bible says about that. In Psalm 146, verse 3, the Bible says, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. Friends, we ought not to put our confidence in humanity. We ought to put our confidence in who? Our confidence must be placed in Jesus Christ. We are told in Jeremiah 17 verse 5, when we put our confidence in men, God actually pronounces a curse. Did you know that? In Jeremiah 17 verse 5, the scripture says, This is what the Lord says, Cursed be the men who trust in mankind, and that make it fleshy strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Friends, our confidence cannot be placed in a single man. When people tend to follow a cult, oftentimes the man became almost supernatural. He became deified. This ought not to be. We are told in the scripture, our confidence, our faith, our hope should only be placed in Jesus Christ. In Isaiah 45 verse 22, we are told, Look unto me, said Jesus, and be ye saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Now, I get this, friends. This is why this channel is called Look and Live. It's because our attention is to turn the eyes upon Jesus. Our goal is to set our mind upon Him. Instead of putting our confidence in men who cannot help nor save us, we need to put our confidence in Jesus. Let us behold the Lamb of God, look and live, so that we can see and experience the salvation of the Lord. Identifying feature number two. The cult leader's word or his teachings becomes absolute truth. Oftentimes, a cult leader, in order for them to sway their converts, will uplift their teaching in a position of God's word. We are told in Mark chapter 7, verse 7, and also verse 8, this was the attitude of the Pharisees in the days of Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says. In the vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men. This is the same spirit, this is the same attitude of a cult. Oftentimes what they will do, they will teach things that has no biblical foundation. And they will make it appear to be true to the converts. And unfortunately, many times, Many times people do not read their Bible correctly and as a result, they allow another man to become their interpreter, to become their inspiration instead of the Word of God. But the Bible tells us this in the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this Word, which is the Word of God, for it is what? There is no light in them. So according to Jesus, the only people you should trust, the only teachings you should trust are the teachings that are based simply on the scripture, the word of God. 
And for you to be able to understand that when a person speaks to you that they are in line with God's word is that you must know God's word for yourself. If they do make a mistake, you can correct them. But oftentimes, occult leaders, they tend to not only teach things that are unbiblical, but they tend to actually discourage people from reading their Bible. Because if people will simply read God's word, they will actually identify them and they will not fall for the deception. So now let's move on to identifying feature number three. Each cult uses pressure tactics to coerce its members into submission. This is also a significant thing applied by many occultic leaders. What they tend to do is since they cannot push people to surrender or follow suit uh, with conviction of the word of God because God's word is not really on their side and the Holy Ghost is not with them. So as a result, what do they have to do? Pressure, force, and they have to use different maneuvers to actually cause the members to submit to their teachings or their concepts. Now, what we're going to find out in the Bible, God does not operate in this way. According to scripture, when God wants to do something, he tends to appeal to the will. He appeals to the decision. He appeals to your frontal lobe. But unlike the cult leaders, they tend to appeal to your emotion. They tend to, uh, they, they tend to minimize, they tend to utilize fear and, and different, uh, um, different coercion tactics to cause their members to surrender. We are told in the book of uh, Joshua 24 verse 15, God says, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. God gives you the choice to we either serve him or reject him. But when it comes to an occult leader, they tend not to even respect your decision. They tend to pull you their way, whether you agree with them or not. But in Revelation 22, verse 17, we are told this more about the character of God in opposition to those who are in occultic leadership. And the spirit and the bride says, come, let him that heareth come. Let him that is at thirst come, Whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. According to scripture, God appeals to the will. God tends to make an appeal and allowing the person to choose for themselves what they will do. God does not use coercion, no force. And any institution or any religion that tends to cause fear, use pressure, use force or coercion to cause their members to follow suit, Friends, run from them. Let's go to identifying feature number four. Each call denies the central truth of the gospel that is the divine son of God. Look for that one as well. Oftentimes, occultic leaders cannot be successful if they put Jesus in his rightful position. So what they have to do, they have to downplay Jesus, sugarcoat Jesus, and minimize Jesus so that they can exalt themselves in a position where they ought not to be. We are told in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is a problem to the occult leader because he tends to lead the people to the truth. Jesus always tells the truth. Jesus always does what's right. And occult leaders don't seem to love Jesus very much because he tends to lead the people into a position where they will know better and oftentimes these people will be equipped to actually stand away and shy away from the deception of these occultic leaders. Now we are told in also Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to nine that this truth no occult leader could actually appreciate because it is biblical in ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast that is a fact my dear friends if you want to be saved do not put your confidence in another man put your confidence in jesus the scripture tells us that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is the Lord, our righteousness. He is the salvation of his people. And for those of us who places our confidence in Jesus, my dear friends, we have no reason to be afraid. Occult leaders can never take the place of Jesus. Identifying feature number five. Cult often urge their converts to leave their families 
and to surrender their possession. They have to use this function as well. In order for them to be successful, they have to pull you away from anyone who might suggest you uh, uh, to, to do otherwise. Anyone who might tell you, watch out for this group of people, watch out for these guys, or they will do this to you. Friends, I can tell you personally that there is a friend of mine We've worked in the same place for a long time. He was actually in a cultic environment. And as he was sharing things with me, I noticed that he was under a solemn deception that this man was this occult leader. Literally was so effective that he had the women separated from their husbands and the husbands separating from their wives if they did not agree uh, on the same teachings that he taught. Um, in so much so that the families were even giving their paycheck to this man. They were living in his big mansion. This was the effect of an occultic leadership. It is good to know that occult leaders will tend to do this. They have to separate families because families tend to have an influence on us and they don't want the family members to either give us warning or counsels that will contradict their views. Now, we are told in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, but evil men and imposters will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. We need to be aware of this. We cannot just place our confidence in men. We must place our confidence in God. Don't get me wrong. God can use men to do amazing things. There are amazing ministers and pastors out there that we need to listen to and follow. But be very careful who you model after. Be very careful who you call the man that is almost infallible. Be very careful as you go about uh, deifying any man. This should never be so. Christ always got to be first in your life and the word of God has to be the unction of your walk. You should not place no confidence in anybody else. While it is true, we need to work with them, pray for them, work with men and serve alongside of them. We must never, we, we must never forget that man is fallible. They are also self-deceived sometimes and they are also misguided by many different things and many different positions in life. So this study has outlined for you five features of a cult leaders. May I quickly give you a review of that. Number one, cult leaders usually have a single leader who becomes the cult's messiah. Cult leaders words or his teachings become absolute. Number three, cult leader uses pressure tactics to coerce his members and to submission. Number four, each cult leaders deny the central truth of the gospel that is the divine son of God. Number five, cults often urge their converts to leave their families and to surrender their possession. Now, here is the question I want to ask. With these facts in mind, how come so many people in the world today still follow after occultic leaders or occultic sex out there in the world there may be several reasons for this it's been said and outlined over over and again over and over again uh, many people are looking for something better they want something different than the average than the norm they want to experience something better and that is not wrong in itself but where we go to find it could be the danger and secondly some people just do not know any better some just don't know their bible they don't know these concepts that we've just talked about you know unfortunately they are misguided and misled because of lack of information third the third reason is the one i want to focus on primarily most people just don't love the truth some people don't love the truth of god's word they will rather study from the from a man relying upon the interpretation of another man instead of going to the word of god for themselves even in this channel i would encourage you friends do your own study don't rely on the, anything that i'm teaching you yes take it with a grain of salt if it's based on the word of god go ahead with it but don't make my words infallible i i, I tell people listen don't even place me in a position where I do not belong because only God's word is infallible. Follow Jesus. Yes, you may follow this ministry. Yes, you may follow Look and Live. You cannot learn something, but do not base your salvation on this YouTube channel. It is based on a relationship with Jesus Christ and a continuing abiding in the word of God. I wanted to share this with you, friends. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has been a blessing to you, 
if you've learned something new today if you want to continue watching look and live and sharing this content with somebody else how about you click below and subscribe to this channel click the bell icon to be notified give me a thumbs up share this video with somebody else as well god bless you dear friends and have a good one until next time have a good one